So I got a request from one of my patrons to do 10 Years Gone. Now, I love 10 Years Gone. And whilst I know it and I love it, I didn't know how to play it. So I'll watch it out for you. Have fun. So we're going to start with an A major chord on the second fret and we're going to play the three finger version because we need to take this third finger off um, a couple of times in order to play the open B string. So once you've got that on we're going to strum from the A to the B and then that third finger comes off and we hit the open B. Go straight back to the G string and then back to the open B. So for the next chord, if you go from an A to an A major 7, so that's moving the 2nd finger down to the 2nd fret of the D and the index to the 1st fret of the G, you've got an A major 7 shape. Move that upper fret and strum it from the A to the E. That's your next chord. So once we've strummed that from the A to the E, we're then going to pick from the A through to the B and back to the D. because the first one starts halfway through the first bar, that's why it might feel a bit irregular playing that picking pattern there, but it is right. Right, so once you've got those parts down, you've pretty much got everything you need to cycle the intro first sections around, but there's a few little variations with that part, so I'm just gonna take you through them now. On the second repeat, when he takes the third finger off, he catches the high E as well as the B. So that's the first little change that you want to do on the second repeat. Then when we go to our second chord, we have a longer pause and then we just pick B, G, D e, and then go back to the A. So the second one in full. So the third one doesn't have any change to that part, but when we get to the second chord again, we've got a pause and then we pick D, G, B, B. It's the same note twice. And for the last one, you do it the same as the first one. So all together. That's a shorter pause. Catch the E, wait, B. section we've got five shapes and a fairly straightforward rhythm pattern. First one A but now we can use our index finger. And we've got two down strokes and then a down up mute and as you're doing those mutes you can transfer to the next chord. So for the second shape I play the seventh fret of the D with the third finger, fifth fret of the G with the index and the seventh fret of the B with the pinky. You could say that that's the middle of a D7 chord, and it is. But because the bass note 
and John Paul Jones is playing is a sixth fret, D sharp. It's this diminished chord, but I don't really hear Jimmy playing the six, so I only stick to those three. And you let the bass take care of the lower part of the harmony, if that makes sense, so. You got the same down up mute after that. And we're gonna go to the top part of an E minor bar chord. So that's the ninth fret of the D. 9th fret of the G, 8th fret of the B, 7th fret of the E. And again, I'm not playing the lower root notes, just the top part of the chord. Now we change our rhythm to down, down, up, down. And then we've got the same down, up, mute. Come back two frets. Now we're going to a D major 7, but again, just the top part. So as you slide that minor chord back two frets, you can then swap the second finger to the G and put the pinky on the B and it's a nice easy change. Same rhythm and then you're down up mutes and slide that major seven shape back two frets to C major seven across the fifth and the third frets. All together. Brings us to our prog riff. And don't forget we're in drop D. Index and second fingers on the second and third fret of that low D string. Then we hit the open A, third fret. And then we hit the open D, and then the third fret. When I first was listening to this, I actually wanted to go but the second fret, the note E instead of the D. Um, and I still kind of like that variation too. Because we resolve back on that E after we've gone to the F. Um, but I do think the track is the open D. But if you want to spice things up, you can change it. So yeah, once you've done that, second fret of the D, and then hit the open A. So this is my favorite section, I love it. Um, the first part I'm gonna show you is all the double stops together. So we've just come from here. We've got that open A ringing out in the bass. And whilst your index finger is flat across the D and the G on the second fret, you're gonna strike those two strings. Then you're gonna put your pinky on the four on the G. You'll do an upstroke and then take it off back to the second frets. So now we're at the fifth fret of the D and the fourth fret of the G. Major third, we're gonna strike that three times. Now we add the pinky to the sixth fret of the G and we do an upstroke. The reason I use the pinky there is because we have a shape change now to the fourth fret of the D and the second fret of the G. And that's a downstroke. And by using the pinky there, we don't have to use the third finger and then change string. That can be a bit fiddly, so using the pinky allows for a much quicker, smoother change. Now you hit the open A again, and we have the same rhythm and concept as before. So whilst you've got that shape on there, we're gonna put the pinky on in the middle. And we do down, up, down. Now take the third finger off and drop the second finger to the third fret of the D and we've got the same three down strokes. And then an up stroke and we add the pinky back to the fourth fret of the G. And our last shape is to put the index finger back across the second fret of the D and the G. Strike the open A and you're back to the start. Now to come out of that section and get back into the previous section, 
instead of just going to the double stop at the end, go to a full A and start midway through like we did for the very first opening part. So. There is a second guitar line that sits on the other side of the mix to the double stops and it's just picking out the higher notes. So you can hit the open A and then you can hit the 2-4-2 two, two on the G and then you come up to the fifth fret of the D. And you're going to hit the 4 and the 6 and then back to the 2 on the G. So then you're going to hit the 4 on the D and obviously hit the 2-4-2 two, two on the G and then the 3 on the D and the 2-4-2. Two, two. You stick a little bit of electric mistress on there. You get that same effect. to the first solo. Now if I start going into the specifics of every single part this is going to end up super long and obviously there's interesting rhythm parts behind the lead parts as well and some nice chord changes. I have included them on my tab on the Patreon and I will show you the chords but I'm not necessarily going to go into the specifics of all the rhythms and the, the little changes but I have put them on there so if you want that go and check that out and I'd appreciate the support. So the chords behind the first solo D major 7, and you've got the pinky having some fun on the 5th fret of the B there. Then we've got, um, it's basically a C, but with an A in the bass, and then a G, and then we've got an E minor 7, but without the low D, because you don't want that. And then you've got an open strum, and then the D major 7. something like that. So here's my version of the first solo. Start with a double stop slide from the 10th fret of the E and the B to the 12 and then come back to the 10. Nice and staccato. I've gone over to my neck pickup now. Um, then we're going to do something similar from the 5 to the 7, just a little bit quicker. So we start with three whole tone bends on the ninth fret of the G. Then we let it down, hit the nine by itself, the seven, come down to the nine on the D, and then the five on the D, resolving on the note G. So three whole tone bends, nine, seven, nine, five. Then we've got this. So we bend the 9 on the G up and down in one fluid movement. Hit the 7 on the G and the 9 on the D. Go back to the 7 on the G. And then hit the 7 again and go to the 9 on the G and back. It's basically 7, 9, 7 back and forth from the G to the D. And then G to the G without changing string. 
So for the next part, I can hear something bubbling on the record. So I like to play the seventh fret of the B and the E double stop and hit that twice. And then I go for the middle of the D major seven shape that we had before, but I just use the second, first and third fingers just to grab that part. So then I go hammer on, pull off from five to seven on the D and then pick the four. Rather than just sliding back, I think it's important to get that um, emphasis on that note, so. Now we're up to this section. So, again, seventh fret of the B and the E, double stop. This time we're gonna flick the pinky onto the 10 on the B and pull it off. It's kind of tricky, but it's cool. Then you're gonna come down to the fifth fret and hammer on the third finger to the seventh fret of the B in the same fashion. Don't worry about being overly precise with that finger that hammers on and pulls off because it kind of catches both of the strings sometimes and it kind of adds to the flavor of this section. But after you've done the five, seven hammer on pull off, you're gonna come down to the second fret and play that double stop there. And you're gonna repeat that. Three times, but on the third time, we're gonna stop on the fifth fret. I then slide up to the seventh fret. I hit it again, down, up. And then I just put my second finger onto the eighth fret of the B. It's very, very quiet on the record, but I can definitely hear that note in there. And then from eight and seven, I go from like major third to minor third, and I slide up to the 12th fret of the B and the 10th fret of the high E. All together, that section sounds like this. Now we've got this. So slide into the 12th fret of the B and 10th fret of the high E. And we're gonna bend that 12th fret up three times. It's weird, I feel like he overbends in the middle. If you wanna be super, super precise, you can bend a whole tone, overbend slightly, and then bend a whole tone again. Before releasing, hitting the 12, and then hitting the 10. And then we have this, which is 12 on the E, 12 on the B. I go third, second finger, and then index finger on the note D, 10th fret of the high E. So now we come up to the 17th fret of the B string, and we're gonna bend that up whole step very quickly, then go to 15, 16, 17. Bend that up, whole step, let it down. Come down to the 15th fret of the B, 16th fret of the G, and then 17th fret of the B, and give that a kind of delayed, cheeky bend up. That 16, I can hear it on the record, a lot of people don't play that, but I can definitely hear it kind of very, very subtly in the middle, so. It's a good example of it being very, very quiet, but definitely there. So now we go back up to the 17th fret of the high E, whole step bend. Hit the 15, and then pick 17, 15, and then pull off 17, 15. Second finger goes down to the 16th fret of the G. So now we hit the 15th fret of the B. 17th fret and then pull that back off to the 15. 
and then we're going to bend the 17 up and down a whole step and pull that off back to the 15 again before hitting the 17 one more time so now we have this cool little lick to finish this section we're going to hit the 17th fret of the high e twice and then we've got a 17th fret of the B pre-bend and then hitting the 15th fret of the B with the index finger. So now we have this. So that's the same double stop slide that opened the solo, but a little bit quicker, more comparable to this one. So once you've done that, we're then going to go back to one of these. But in the middle, we don't do the hammer on pull off back to the seven. So we just hit the fives, then the twos. Then after that, we go back to hitting the hammer on pull off in the middle. So we then repeat this twice. And then on the third repeat, Instead of going to the second fret, we go to the third fret. And we go down, down, up on that third fret. And then slide to the eight and the seven on the B and the E, if you remember that from before. And once you're there, you can strum down and then pick that high E string again. and then slide back up into that minor third, which was 12 on the B and 10 on the E. So you already know a lot of this section, it's just one new little bit, but it's really important because I think this is one of the parts that always gets um, played a little bit off, so. So the next part. Slide to the 12 on the B, then the 10 on the high E, and the 12. The same notes as before, but just a little bit different rhythm. Then we're going to come back up to the 17th fret of the B, bend that up. And then we're going to go 15, 16, 17, like we did before. Now we bend that 17 up and down and go to the 15th fret of the B string. So now we've got the 17th fret of the high E. We're gonna bend the 17th fret of the B up and down, and then hit the 15th fret. Quickly hit the 17th fret again, and we're gonna bend the 17th fret of the B up and down again. Hit the 15, and then we bend it up and down again, so. So it's 17 on the E, 17 on the B, bend up and down. Hit the 15, bend the 17 up and down again, and then hit the 15 again. section this. We start with our index finger on the fifth fret of the D, A, D. And we're going to pick everything here. At first I was like, oh, we could maybe hammer it on, but it sounds way better to pick every single stroke. So this is the best way to think about it, to get it into your head at first. We start by hitting the five once, and then we go to the seven with the third finger, twice, nine, twice, back to the seven with the index finger twice, and the five twice. One, two, 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 two. And then we just play it 
alternate with no gaps. Once you're back here, it continues into the next bar. So when we first get back to that fifth fret with the index finger, this is the rhythm. So we've got up, down, up, down, down, up at first. So try that again. Up, down, up, down, down, up. And then from there, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up. So really slowly, up, down, up, down, down, up. Then we're going to strike those same three strings, but open now. Giving us an open D power chord. And now we're going to take our index finger to the second fret of the G and third finger to the fourth fret of the D. These two notes. Um, here you, you, you do want a cleaner sound. So if you are overdriving this section, maybe you could kick your overdrive off or um, just kind of maybe clean it up with the volume but we're gonna upstroke from the high E all the way down. And I like to come back near the bridge there, just because it kind of cuts through a little bit more. So for all the other repeats, it's exactly the same, except after you've done that chord, you're just gonna hit another down strum on the open Ds, so. First one. And that will take you into the next section. As I mentioned in the previous solo, there are some interesting chords and cool things going on, but to keep the lesson time down, because otherwise it gets too ridiculous. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing, and if you want the tab, like I said, it is on my Patreon. <laughs> start with a whole step bend on the 12th fret of the B and it pushes in from the previous bar. After that whole step bend we hit the 12 on the B, then the 10, then the 9, and then the 10 again. Then we're going to go back and forth between the 9 on the G and the 11 on the D. And then a whole step bend on the 11th fret of the G up and down. And now what you're going to do is take that whole thing down two frets. For the first part, so that's going to be 10 whole step bend up. And then we hit 10, 8, 7, and then it slightly changes. So this time we're going to hit the seventh fret of the G to the ninth fret of the D and back like we did before. Then we go to the seven on the B and then the nine on the G. At this point, I'm just going to say, if you want to do the lower harmony, you're going to play everything you've just done exactly the same 
um, spacing and the same shapes, but instead of starting on the 12, you'll start on the 7 on the B. And then go to the 5, two frets down. Okay, so get rid of some of my hair that's falling out there. It's the stress of COVID. Um, that's not good. <laughs> we'll go uh, second time. And then we have that little filler lick, which is really cool. So that's the ninth fret of the G and the 11th fret of the D. And then you just go back between them, slightly stuttered. And then you go to the second riff, exactly the same as before. Down here, it's the same. To that section. So there are some other little harmonized rolls in there. I'm going to move through them pretty quickly. They're on my tab, like I said, but I just don't want this lesson to be so monstrous that people are put off by uh, the timestamp. <laughs> There's that little lead line that goes over the top of this section at the end. So we start with the 10th fret of the B string, and you're going to go down, down, up. And then we're going to take the 12th fret of the B, bend that up a whole step, and then bend it down and pick both of them. And then you're gonna pick 10, 12, 10 on the B. Bit of vibrato, pause, hit the 11 on the G, and then do that same thing with the bend. So, like this. From that point onwards, every rotation, we come in like this. So we get rid of the and we replace it with 9 on the G and 11, and then the 10 on the B, and we walk back up. You will also notice there is a harmony on the second bend. So those notes are 15 on the B, bend up a whole step, down, and then 14, 15, 14, back and forth. Now, if you're doing it by yourself, um, you could alternate, you know. kind of cool but if you want to do the harmony you can take the bending aspect out of it and just go to double stops kind of similar to what happens in the middle of ramble on if you're familiar with that so instead of playing we're going to play those notes there so that's the 12th fret of the e 10 and the 9 but the shapes are going to look like this so 12th fret of the b with the third finger 
and then index finger on the 10. So that's the minor third shape. And you're going to slide that up to the 12 and the 14. Back. And then you're going to come back to a major third shape. That's 10 on the B and 9 on the E. And then go back and forth between those two. Whilst you don't get the same kind of swooping aspect to it, you do get the harmony. Ooh, it's a bit of a monster, isn't it? It's quite a long one. I've not even edited this video yet because I'm shooting this before, but I know that I'm very tired after editing this because it was a very long video to shoot and it was a very, very long video to edit and I'll be kicking back and relaxing now, watching this back, drinking beer, as always. I just want to remind you that there are some interesting, cool things going on with the rhythm playing and the chord progressions behind both solos, but I didn't want to make this lesson four days long, so I just whacked him on the tab and stuck that on my Patreon. So if you're interested in delving into it a little bit further, a little bit deeper, check out the link. I would appreciate the support. If not, you've got more than enough to be getting on with there. And um, have fun, stay safe, and I will see you soon for another video. Take it easy. I know what you're thinking, like, why, why have you always got your hat on inside? First of all, I could do what I want. It's my channel, isn't it? Second of all, have you seen this wig? I mean, before lockdown, it was big enough. But like now, as soon as I go down to look at what I'm doing, I look like it. So, yeah. Unless it's bothering you that much. It's not bothering you that much, is it? Let's be honest. Right, I'm bored of bearing myself talk now.